Now, what if this had been in basic solution? Um, so if it was in basic solution, you couldn't use H+. Plus, right? By the way, does this make sense so far? Can we oh, move yeah, on? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what about if we're in basic solution? Well, different textbooks have different methods for this. Your textbook has a kind of an interesting method I don't remember seeing before, but which I kind of like. So we'll stick with the method in your textbook. Um, here's what your textbook does. Now, first of all, remember, what's wrong with this method? This can't be the right answer for a basic solution, because there wouldn't be that many protons in a right. basic solution. So now we need to get rid of the protons and put in hydroxides. Now, here's what your textbook does to, to do that. First of all, they need to get rid of these protons. Well, they, get, they cancel all the protons by adding hydroxides. They're going to use these hydroxides to neutralize these protons, so to speak. Now, how many hydroxides do we need to neutralize these protons? Eight. Yeah. If we had eight, that would uh, cancel out these. Let's see if that really works. If you add eight protons to eight hydroxides, what do you get? Eight oxygens. Now, they're not actually going to annihilate each other. Yeah. So the hydrogens will still exist. What do we get when we add eight protons to eight hydroxides? Eight waters. Eight waters, right? Because you're going to have 16 of the H. You're going to have 16 hydrogens. Well, 8 times 2 is 16. And you're going to have 8 oxygens. And what's the total charge going to be? And it's going to be neutral. Neutral. That's right. That's the thing that we're neutralizing. We're not destroying the atoms. We're destroying the charges. Okay. 8 positives plus 8 minuses gives you a zero overall charge. So and water is neutral. Can we cancel some? Yeah, in a second, it's good that you thought about that. Now we're going to be able to cancel that with these. Let's get back to that in a second, but you're right. All right, so now we have these eight waters over here. Now, if you think about it, though, that, that can't be all there is to it, because you're not allowed to just add anything you want to one side of an equation, because that changes the equation. When are you allowed to add something to an equation? Well, it's like an algebra. We can add anything we want to the left side of the equation as long as we add the same things to the right side of the equation. That's the golden rule of algebra. So if I'm going to add eight hydroxides here, I just have to balance that by adding eight hydroxides over here. By the way, what's the phase of hydroxides? Uh, eight yeah, AQ, because those are also dissolved in the water. And now it was legal to add these eight hydroxides here. You can add whatever you want to one side if you cancel that by adding to the other. And now we have, instead of having protons in the equation, we have hydroxides. But that's what we want, because we wanted what you would have in a basic solution. So it's perfectly OK that these hydroxides don't get neutralized. It's OK to have hydroxides in a basic solution. Now one of you had already noticed that now we can cancel some waters. So are we, are we going to be left with waters on the left or the right? Yeah, on the left. And how many waters will, will, we, be, will we be left with? Yeah, because these four waters will cancel with these and leave only four waters left. What I really just did there is, again, more algebra. I subtracted four waters from the left, which is legal if I subtract four waters from the right. Well, if you subtract four waters from here, you have four left. And if you subtract four waters from here, you have none left. So we're still treating this like algebra, which is legal. So now let's write down what the, re the equation will be. MnO4 minus aqueous plus not protons anymore, but four waters plus five irons gives Mn2 plus aqueous. These waters are gone. Plus five iron three plus plus eight hydroxides. It might be a good idea to, again, double check that all the elements balance and all the charges balance. But if we didn't make any mistakes, then everything should balance. All right, 
So um, now we've learned how to balance both acidic and in acidic and basic solutions. Notice that the neat trick that your textbook uses is they didn't try to teach us a whole new method for basic solutions. Yeah. When you're in basic solutions, first you pretend it's acidic solutions. So even if they ask you to oh, a balance okay. in a basic solution, you would start by just pretending it was acidic and balancing as if it was acidic. So you would still balance the hydrogens using protons. You would still balance this. So even if we had known all along we were in basic solution, we would still have this intermediate pretend step where we used protons. Because we know we can always get rid of those at the end. That way we only have to learn one method that we can just fix it at the end. So uh, in either acidic or basic solution, the initial steps are all the same. It's just that in the basic solution, they have one more extra step where they get rid of the protons by adding hydroxides. How many hydroxides do you need to add? Well, the same as the number of protons you had. So if you had eight protons, you have to add eight hydroxides. Um, and that gives you eight waters. Uh, and that's only legal if we also add the hydroxides to the other side, which is where we got the fact that this is in basic solution. So we have hydroxides. Let's copy this so, equation into your notes. Like for the last mm -hmm. one that we did with the um, manganese and the oxygen together as one uh, compound. Yes. And it's negative. Can you put like the brackets around it like Just that look to, to know that the negative is for the whole thing, or does that make it some? Is that like different notation for something else? So it was written like this, mm -hmm. and you wanted. Yeah. Okay, can you do to write that? like this? Yeah, I suppose that's legal. So that's fine. Kind we kind of did that when we were working with transition right. metals, right? We put right. The, the, the compounds in brackets. Uh, it certainly wouldn't hurt you as a thought process. Um, yeah. You shouldn't really be necessary because uh, if I was going to put the, uh, we don't generally assign charges to the individual atoms, again. Right. And if I was going to do that in my notation, I would put that directly above or below the atoms. I probably wouldn't, I would not leave these brackets in my final answer. Uh, but if it helps you to think through the problems more clearly, that's fine. Whatever it works for you to uh, avoid confusion. You're right, it's very important to realize that there's a single negative charge spread over this entire molecule. I have seen that sometimes people get confused and think there's four negatives, one on each oxygen. Yeah. That's not right. So that's a good thing to watch out for. Okay. 